Good evening, this is Quintus Curtius. Welcome back to the podcast. And in this podcast, we'll be talking about obsession and judgment. Obsession and judgment. And let me explain to you what I mean by that. I've been listening lately to a really good audiobook that I found. And it's about uh, a subject that I don't usually read about or know very much about. It's about um, storm chasing, you know, these guys that chase tornadoes around the Great Plains. Anyway, anyway, the name of this book is called The Man Who Caught the Storm, The Life of Legendary Tornado Chaser, Tim Samaras. And this is a very interesting book. It's It's a biography of a guy, a very driven, obsessed man who loved chasing storms and learning about tornadoes and really, really wanted to to delve into what made them tick and what made them the awesome spectacles that they are. And this is a guy who uh, had a very, very interesting life story. I don't want to go into it too much in detail, but just the kind of the rudiments of it. This This guy as a kid always had a very strong aptitude for mechanical things and uh, inventions, things like that. And he, um, he, you know, in the early seventies, he um, he never went to college. He, uh, I think, I'm, I can't remember exactly, but I think he, I think he did get a high school, he did get a high school diploma or degree. But I guess he just had so much ability. He just immediate, immediately went from high school to started working at a radio shack locally, and then he got a job with the government. And he was just one of these guys who was a very, very motivated self-starter, a motivated self-starter, just with a lot of aptitude for technical and mechanical things. And he was always interested in storm chasing. And um, at some point in his life, he started to pursue that as a, as a full-time occupation. And this was in the 90s, the 90s and the early 2000s. And I guess at that time, there really was not very much known about tornadoes, what made them tick, what made them form, all these measurements. He invented a a new type of machine, some new types of probes that could measure barometric readings inside of tornadoes and around them. Anyway, bottom line is, this guy was an obsessed and driven individual. And he spent his life doing what he loved, which was chasing storms. But he eventually was killed doing it. And we can go back and forth and say whether he took foolhardy risks or whether he just took the risks that were inherent in the job. I'm not really... uh, It's a question that, that can be debated both ways. I think he certainly had an appetite for risk, which I think any successful person needs to have to some degree. But whether he took foolhardy risks... That, I think, is something that's that's open to dispute. But in any case, he was eventually killed. He and his son and another person were killed chasing a storm. Um, and, you know, he died. You know, he, was, he was killed doing what he loved. And it, it struck me as I was reading this book or listening to it, because I have the audio book version, but it struck me from listening to this story that there are a lot of these kinds of people that get fixated on their interest or their hobby or their avocation or even their regular job, and they let it consume them. They are unable or unwilling to put the brakes on at certain times and to know when enough is enough. And, you know, another example popped into my mind, and you you may remember this, uh, the, the director, Werner Herzog, made a very good movie about this guy, and this guy's name was Timothy Treadwell. The movie was named Grizzly Man, and it was released a long time, it was like the early 2000s, I think, very good movie, but a, a, a biographical film about this guy, Timothy Treadwell, who would go to Alaska and live in these uh, habitats of grizzly bears, and he did this for many years, and eventually... He was killed by the bears, by, uh, I guess, a a bear that just, you know, saw him for what he was, which was food. 
And again, another example of somebody who who allowed their own, you know, their own obsessions to really consume them or to blind them to the realities of what they were doing or not doing. There's there are a lot of examples of this. You know, there's been travel literature written about it. There was that one guy. Remember the the movie um, Into the Wild. And this uh, this movie was based on a book that I read back in the '90s about this uh, uh, about this uh, Chris McCandless, this guy that went off into the Alaskan wilderness to live off the land, and he ended up dying of uh, of of, um, of poisoning, basically by plants, eating the wrong plants. And that's just, again, these are just three examples of this. But my point is to kind of point out this dichotomy between obsession and judgment and the inherent tension that exists between these two things. And I think to be a a successful man or a successful person, everyone needs to have to some degree a, a level of obsession or focus or fixation or whatever you want to call it in what they do. But at the same time, that level of fixation and obsession cannot be so great as to blind us to our own safety, our own health, our own well-being, and the well-being of those around us. Because this is one of the tragedies of, of these types of obsessive personalities, is that they drag other people down with them. They really do, whether through uh, you know, obsession or drug use or, or whatever, they tend to pull other people into themselves like a vortex. And so here's the real question that arises. You know, what is the right way to view this? A guy like this, Tim Samaras, what is the right way to, to view him? So let's say there are these two opposing views. One view says, well, you know, he, he was great at what he did. He worked hard at what he did, and it just so happens that his number came up. He had a bad day. It was just bad luck. He wasn't crazy. He just, you know, he died. You know, he died doing what he what he loved doing. You know, I've heard that so often. Man, that's one of those expressions that I just hate. You know, he well, he died. He died doing what he loved doing. Well, you know what? Whatever. Okay, we get that. Okay, but let's let's just use that as an argument. You know, he he you know he was not. Uh, taking foolhardy risks, he just it was just part of the way the game is played, and this is what happened. That's one side of the coin. The other side of the coin says, as wise men, as wise individuals who are living a life of balance, we should be able to exercise our own judgment and not have the kind of hubris that pushes us over the edge, that leads us to our own self-destruction. We're expected to have a certain level of maturity, a certain level of respect for the for nature, for the world, whatever you want to call it, so as not to tempt fate. So as not to tempt fate. And, you know, the classical mythology is filled with stories of those who try to tempt fate, who try to reach beyond what the gods have allotted for them, and they suffer the consequences. You may remember the legend of Daedalus, D-A-E-D-A-L-U-S, the guy who tried to fly. He built wings made of feathers and wax, and he flew too close to the sun, and his uh, wings were melted and he plunged to earth and to his death. And again, this is a, a parable or an allegory, but what does it tell us? It tells us that we should not tempt fate too much. We should not really push things too far beyond the realms of reasonableness. You know, So there, that, that, those are the two sides of the coin. One side says, hey, he, it's... it's you know, he died doing what he loved doing. That's just the way it goes. Deal with it. And then there's the other side that says we should seek to um, to act, to live a life of balance and judgment and 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 understanding, and not try to push things 
we have to we have to learn to rein in our hubris. We have to learn the qualities of discipline, judgment, respect, and restraint. Maybe that's what it comes down to, restraint. The difference between obsession and restraint. Obsession commands us to act in certain ways that impact our judgment. And restraint is that harness that pulls us back in and keeps us from plunging over the edge into the abyss. Now, where does that balance lie? Well, only experience can say. I think experience and judgment and age, that's one of the advantages that you get when you get older. You learn where the boundaries are. You learn You learn when not to push things too far. And I think that looking back on my own life, I think that one of the weaknesses that younger guys have is they just have not yet developed that sense of seasoning, that sense of restraint, that sense of judgment to know when to leave it alone, to know when to leave things alone, to know when to put themselves in check, and to know when to exercise some level of judgment and restraint. It takes time. It really does. And where that line is drawn, everyone has to decide for themselves, I think, at some point. We can't really arbitrarily just draw lines. But I think what we can say is we have to be able to know when our obsessions are pushing us beyond the realms of reasonableness. We always have to keep that in mind. I think that's a big part of maturity, of being a thinking, rational person, is you have to know when to stop. There's wisdom sometimes in knowing when to let go. When to let go and when to proceed. And I think more than anything, as I finish this book on Tim Samaras, I say to myself, this is a guy who did not know when to stop. And I don't like to criticize the dead. I'm not trying to do that. But it seems to me that there is a certain degree of arrogance in someone who is unwilling to listen and always thinks that they know best and plunges ahead recklessly, heedlessly into the vortex and brings others along with him to meet their own fate. This is, to me, the height of of folly, the height of foolishness. And... Where that line is drawn, I don't know. I think every every man has to decide for himself where that line is drawn. But I think we can definitely say that at some point it has to be drawn. It has to be drawn at some point if we are to think of ourselves and consider ourselves rational men of, of reason and judgment. But this is the, the this is the dichotomy, obsession and restraint. So we should think about that. I really think that we should ponder that. And when you finish this podcast, and I'll make it quick, I'll wrap it up here because as you know, I like to keep my podcasts very quick, very brief. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that tension between obsession and restraint and try to map out in your own mind where you want to draw that line. And as you get older, where that line is drawn, where that line shifts as you get older. We become less willing to take risks maybe as we get older. Or maybe in some cases more willing to take risks. I don't know. It all depends. But at least it's something you can think about. So so uh, so try to do that. And that'll be all for me now. I'm Quintus Curtius. Good night.